This event happened when I was around 13 years old. I was going on a family road trip with my parents and siblings. My brother was 16 at the time and my half-sister was 21. I don't completely remember where we were going or where we stayed since it was almost 15 years ago. All I remember was that we rented a cottage in a small village. Next to the village was a lot of mountains surrounding the perimeter, and there were probably only 20 houses in the village. Next to the cottage was a small lake that was big enough to kayak in, and to the right of the little lake was a small shed. The shed was very old, and its ceiling had been poorly repaired. There was ivy growing all over it. Although this may not seem scary, the door was wide open and the place we were staying at was all fenced off with a really high fence. This probably meant that no one would be able to come into our property. Later that same day, my brother and I decided to check it out since we had nothing else to do other than swim in the lake before dinner. Bear in mind, this happened in the winter, meaning it would get dark much earlier than in the summer. We walked up towards the shed, and as we walked towards it, we realized that a source of light was shining through the ceiling. It didn't seem like it was a normal ceiling light, but was almost like a torch. We saw the light slowly move around in between the cracks of the shed. Then, in one sudden motion, the light randomly pointed at us. My brother and I were petrified by the situation. We both looked at each other with blank expressions. Our parents were in the lounge watching TV so they wouldn't be able to hear us at all if we cried out for help. I don't like to be cliche, but my big brother is a very strong person, emotionally, physically, and mentally. So I was surprised when I saw his lower lip tremble out of the corner of my eye. I thought he was going to protect me by telling me what to do, but instead he just stood there, frozen, like me, with a petrified face as the bright light blinded us through the gaps between the walls of the shed for what felt like an eternity. Suddenly, the light switched off. A small sense of relief hit me as the light turned off, but I was still scared for my life. Because the light was shining on our faces for so long, our eyes were not used to the dark. When we tried to escape by running in the opposite direction towards the cottage, we couldn't see where we were going. Then, as if the situation couldn't get any worse, we heard a loud shuffling sound coming from the shed. We could hear the sound starting to crescendo as we ran silently towards the cottage. The sound was getting louder and louder. Soon after, I could just make out a hollow voice coming from behind us. I hesitantly looked behind me. To my horror, I saw a middle-aged man standing next to the shed with a flashlight in his hand. His hands were covered in what looked like blood, and his hair was greasy as if he never showered once in his life. He had a long beard that looked tangled and disgusting. In a faint voice, he said, Come here, child. I have many toys in here. Do you want to play some games with me? He said this with a creepy smile and eyes wide open without blinking. He looked as if he was talking to me. I instantly screamed as loud as I could and my brother grabbed my hand with dear life as we sprinted back into the cottage. We told our parents what happened and I hugged my brother and sister with tearful eyes. They didn't believe us at first because they were so shocked by the situation and so confused. But when they saw the monstrous man's face pressed up against the window with a bloody butcher's knife in his hand, they screamed in horror and immediately called the police. The police were nearby since it was a small town, but as the sirens came, we saw the man run back to his shed, and unfortunately, they never caught him. They asked us what he looked like and what he said to us. The police told us that a girl that looked similar to me and was roughly the same age as me murdered last month because of that man we saw from the shed. I can't imagine what would have happened if we stayed in a busy town that weekend, or if the police didn't make it in time. I am now scared to go near sheds after that incident, and I will never be the same. A situation like this has not happened since, but I really hope that man is either caught or is being chased by the police, because those few moments scarred me for life. I 
am a 16 year old girl. Years ago, in the summer, I left my place in the city to visit my aunt and uncle's house in the suburbs of New Jersey. I mainly went to hang out with my cousin. Let's call her Kate. My cousin and I are three years apart. My aunt and uncle both worked in Manhattan. One day, my aunt and uncle decided to attend a party after work. During the day, Kate and I went down to the street to her friend's house because they had a pool. We spent all day swimming. When we walked back to her house, it was around 4 p.m. It was still sunny out. All of a sudden, Kate's phone stopped working. Nothing to worry about. I still had mine and it was brand new. We spent another hour outside and figured it was time to call my aunt to tell her we were okay. On the steps, I pulled my phone out, but it was not working. We took the battery out, put it back in, but still nothing. With no way to call my aunt, we just went inside the house. It was maybe 5 p.m. Kate's older sister, Julie, a high schooler, was spending the night at her friend's house, so we were all alone. In the living room, we put the two sofas together as we normally did when I slept over. We were both tired and ready to sleep. We had been left alone like this a lot of times, so it didn't phase us. The house is big and gets pitch black. All of a sudden, we heard a big bang that sounded like brass or metal coming from across the hall. We got up and checked Kate's room. Nothing had fallen. We went back to the living room to sleep. Maybe two hours later, we heard another bang coming from the room. We checked again. Nothing had fallen. This time, we were a little unnerved. We went back but stayed up and shortly heard a bang a third time coming from the same room. We were nervous. We went on opposite sides of the hallway and walked in the room this time like a little SWAT team. Everything was intact. We couldn't sleep after. We stayed up on the sofas and saw a shadow coming from the basement. The basement had no door. It was just open. No one was home yet. We called out for Kate's parents and if they were home, they would have said something. Their driveway was empty, their car wasn't there. We were terrified. Kate and I grabbed knives and we just stayed down on the kitchen floor. Nothing happened. After another hour, we went back to the sofas. We woke up to the sound of a girl screaming, help me! We sprang up and heard someone banging on the door, but we were too petrified because we saw another shadow next to the shadow from earlier. Terrified, we just made sure the door was locked and went back to the sofa. After 30 minutes, we were woken up again, but this time to a police car and ambulance lights coming through from the living room windows. We were exhausted and went back to sleep. Sometime during the early morning, Kate's parents came home. We were sleeping and heard a huge bang coming from Kate's room. This time, my uncle came up from the basement, which is where my aunt and uncle's room was. He was holding one of his metal bats. He was ready to protect us. With my uncle in front of us, we all went into the room. Nothing was on the ground and nothing had fallen. We knew we weren't crazy because even Kate's parents heard it. We never could explain what happened that night. The next morning, both Kate and my phone started working. After that day, I hated going to their house. I believe their house is haunted. Either that or someone was trying to come inside because they knew their car wasn't in the driveway and they thought they could break in. Hey. Yeah, I just put the video right there. Thank you.